Town of Lysander, $702.47 for final utility bill at the Old Station 3. Verizon, $260.68 for internet. Uh, Bobbleton Central School District, again for gas for February charges. Uh, McNeil and Company, $969.63 for commercial package uh, insurance change. And finally, Napa for $105.95 for Blue Death and a Gauge for a total of $325,610.31. Any questions for anybody? <coughs> Make a motion to pay vouchers 1 through 35 for $325,610.31. You want to do a second first or second it? Becky? Yes. Tony? Yes. Rick? Yes. Chris? Yes. Uh, I don't have any communications this month. No general report. But under administration, to follow up on the conversation from the workshop on the two members that were uncovered by VFBL due to moving outside of the district limits, they were brought back up. Well, let me back up. Uh, everyone should have a copy of Article 3. Let's stay tuned until it works. That's where I stuck stuff. Um, Article 3 membership was what our conversation was about within the district. Um, so there was one specific line that talked about immediately adjacent fire districts for membership. Um, we had discussion about removing that. We are in the process of having our policies rewritten by our attorney. Um, in, in the meantime, I would like to make a motion to remove that, those five words, uh, the highlighted part where it's or in and immediately <coughs> in the fire district, um, to allow the membership um, to continue for those two members. This does not affect us in a large scale way because the company bylaws and membership rules do not open it up. Uh, to just anybody, they're very specific in what areas they have to serve. Um, so there's no concern about having a flood of individuals coming to the district. If we remove that, it only states that you have to be a member, you must live within the <coughs> district. We do have other district members. Which you can, which it you have to adhere to policy 19 in reference to moving outside of the district after becoming a member. So they would still follow that what they have done. We just have members that joined the didn't move up. They were always up. I just be concerned. So until we change that, anyone that does live outside a district can't join. Not if they follow the guidelines and what the rules are for town law. Town law states that we have to make a resolution to allow outside district membership. Which we can do. Are we allowed to um, go into executive session? Yes. Can you break right now and go into executive session? Yes. Okay. I need to do that. At the request of Commissioner McIntyre, we are going to go into executive session. We are going to end the regular meeting, go into executive session at 7.10. We'll take the motion. 
Yes, I made it a motion. I'll second that. I make a motion that we close the executive session at 718. Second. Seconded by Rick. All in favor? Aye. And we will open up the regular meeting again at 718. Okay, so uh, after communication, a miscommunication in reading something, we are, I am withdrawing the motion to make an amendment to Article 3. Um, and that was the only thing that I had under administration. Did you have anything? I did not. Okay. <coughs> um, moving on to financials. Uh, Rick, did you have anything? I don't. All right. So I have some good news, I think. Um, we went out today uh, to bid for the bond for the uh, Station 3. We had three uh, banks bid on it, uh, Roosevelt and Cross at an interest rate of 2.029, Robert Baird um, at an interest rate of 2.098, and Green County Bank at an interest rate of 2.29. Um, we accepted the lowest bid of Roosevelt and Cross at 2.029. Yeah, I have a handful of things to report. Um, first of all, the Chief's car evaluation. There's some good news and bad news. Um, we've got two cars. One, basically, the whole floor is rotten. The rocker panels are rotten. Um, I'm recommending that not sending it to the auction because I, I would, it's just not something I think we should tie our name to. I think it would be a good extrication prop for the chief's office. That's just a recommendation. Um, talk to the body shop on that one directly. And uh, you know, we would have to basically cut the whole floorboards out and weld new floorboards and all that. And that's not even touching the mechanical side of it. So that's the one. The one over sitting in Noble's parking lot right now is uh, the one that's the better of the two. I talked to uh, Nobles now twice, and they're having their head guy mechanically. They, they found a bunch of stuff, but they don't have a rock solid financial number. In, in his words, they were buried the last two weeks, so I told them take their time, and I didn't put them to the fire, to be honest with you, but he's not charging us for that. So um, I'll have the financial number within a day or two. I'll get a hold of you guys, email it or whatever. And then, then bring either you know officially do whatever, but definitely no matter what we do, one's got to I think should go to the scrap yard out in that that yard. Um, that's where we're at with those. Uh, quite frankly, the the body side of the second one at Nobles, there's very minuscule things for us to do. So if it mechanically is that fun, the one where you flip flop the yeah. window? <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening. If we keep it right, so that's where I'm at. Unfortunately, I thought I'd have a number for you. I was kind of a little lackadaisical, but I, we're getting it for free, so that's where we're at. With that then I want to report on some truck maintenance stuff. As uh, you've seen on a lot of the emails and notifications, been a little busy with it. Um, engine 11, that's the one that's currently over here now. That is the one that had the accident. I have all of the body panels on order. They come from Toy. That's been the delay. I have that hopefully within the next couple weeks, I'll have the parts and I'm doing the PM and all the miscellaneous ERTs that have come in for an example. I've gotten four today on that truck alone. Um, miscellaneous stuff. So that's on the schedule. Truck one's completed. It, Better yet, all of the stuff in the bills are all completed. I didn't do anything this week as far as PMs because of obviously the lettering over the last two weeks. That's winding down on Thursday. So uh, on Monday, I actually, I will let the, the chief's office know which truck is going for provisions. Now I'm, you know, 
we're getting a better program, you know, but we're moving forward. It's just, uh, it's been a challenge to keep up. You know, uh, one of the things that I think everybody needs to know is every time I get an ERT, I can't just send, or we can't just send a tech to fix that one, you know, small item. What I try to do is get, condense them and build them in. For example, we have some uh, climb event things to take care of. That'll be done Friday, but here, they gotta go over to station three. And there was an issue with uh, Rescue Three's climb event. That'll be addressed on Friday, and then ladder twos will be taken care of on Friday. So that's kind of the, 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 the challenge and the balance. So um, moving forward, I gotta thank the, the Chief's Office for working with me and being a little bit flexible on things, but trying to keep up the best we can. We have to, um, we'll have to get the information to declare that cheese vehicle surplus, right? Regardless of what we do, whether we scrap it or turn it over to the office for mm -hmm. okay. uh, Building rooms, Jeff? Yes, I'm going to uh, start getting quotes to do the ceiling for the year station one. Budget for a station each year. Um, and also, is the AC for upstairs, is that a budget, is that a project that's going to Quotes or bids, or it was right around the 20,000 the last night. Let me. I thought we budgeted for it. We did the budget last night. I don't have the budget. I have the new budget. Um, I All right, Jeff, let us double check that and we'll go back to you. Okay. Um, first thing, agent. Uh, yes, I have um, all the RTPs from the uh, workshop, and then I have um, a couple new ones. Um, one of them is. Um, more test kits for the N95 mass that um, safety officer Dunlap was asking for. And, um, and then uh, Chris needs some uh, command strips. And then um, the last RTP is for um, a large area search rope bag setup for um, requested by uh, Chief's office. Do um, you want me to go through each one of these individually, or if anybody has any questions, I can hopefully elaborate a little more if we need to. Any questions from the board? Nope. reference the total there are an RTP numbers right mm -hmm. Correct. okay um, I'll make a motion to move forward with all, all the RTPs listed for five thousand nine hundred and one dollars I'll second the motion Tony? yes Kathy? yes Rick? yes Chris. yes
Anything else? Um, no, that's, uh, that's all I have right now. Okay. Uh, security and computers. I need to get an update. I'm waiting on an update from Doyle for the door system. Uh, Jeff uh, hung one of the new kiosks for the Red NMX system. Um, still got to get power and everything to it. And then station tubes need to be hung up. Um, and uh, with the cutover that the Chief's office did to the Northwest dispatching, um, and Alpine switching to the new server. Uh, the, the system's not working right now for printing and, and sign-ins, but it, it'll be up and running tomorrow. Then the last thing I have on here is uh, the purchasing agent, Wayne's uh, computer uh, seems to have died. Um, the original plan that Wayne and I were talking about and, and what I would like to do is get Wayne a new laptop uh, similar to what we did with Megan. That way he can work from home as well as be able to just bring it in and um, dock it into a docking station. Megan's all in was about $1,500. Um, in the time being, uh, before we do anything like that or, or order anything, um, one of the two new computers that we purchased uh, about a month, month and a half ago, has not been set up yet, so I'm going to have that set up in, um, in Wayne's spot for him. So uh, next, or for the workshop, I'm going to um, send over some stuff for Wayne to get some RTPs going. Chris, um, in the meantime, I mean, how, how, I mean, if it doesn't boot up and he can't do what needs to be done, where does that put us, I mean, is that the temporary going to make it, I mean, where we're at, how, I mean, if it's something that needs to be done, it interrupts our daily business, or kind of like? I can have the, the newer computer that was designated for elsewhere set up for him within the next week for him to use, but long term, I want to get him that laptop Agreed. so he can work from home as well as, uh, or as well as other stations too, when he's uh, going around, especially doing his inventory and everything like that. Um, so a week to get him rolling, at yeah, least temporarily. Okay. If that, I just, I got to get it dropped off at Advanced IT or um, when they're scheduled to be out here next, have them check it out. So Understood. I'll, I'll have them get it done within the week. And that's all I have. Chris, I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> when are they going to put the new computer in that's been sitting on the table by my computer, which is giving me more and more trouble every day. I didn't know it was up there and ready to it's go. It's sitting up there and it's marked treasurer. Okay. In a I'll, box. I'll, uh, I'll double check with them and uh, make sure it gets set up. Okay. So. Thank you. Yep. Report no reports of injuries or illnesses since our last meeting here. Uh, COVID, all I'm going to say is it's still out there. We've got to maintain a high level of observance, making sure we're not uh, contaminating ourselves or coming in contact with people that are contaminated. Do the right things that we've been doing, such as wearing masks, uh, distancing, sanitizing. Uh, it's all working for us. To have a positivity rate that low is not bad for us. It's good. It's good for the, through the state, too. Or we're better than some of those areas in the state right now. So. Continue with that. We'll hopefully see this thing dissolve uh, soon. Uh, I know there's some stuff talk about surges, and one of the suppliers of medications is having some issues, some questions. They'll work through it, I'm sure. So keep your heads up. If you need to get a you can get a test done, or if you need to get an injection, please do if you can. Uh, last thing I want to talk about is uh, hydration, over over exertion and heat stress. We're coming into that time of the year now where it's going to start creeping into the vocabulary every day. Boy, it's hot. Well, as you're all firefighters or uh, are familiar with the, the, how the conditions are, then you know that we need to be talking about it. And our signs around here during the station, several places that allow you to judge what your hydration capabilities are at that point. 
the main thing is we need the hydration available and making sure that you're getting the proper rest in between. Uh, we're looking at the rehab uh, SOG. We'll look for some improvements there. Uh, possibly some coalition discussions with that too going forward. But we need to be able to take care of our own initially. That's all I have for this month. Does anybody have any questions for me? schedule something to check with you if we have something or if you have something else going on for the same space that we require can I please have that in return the only reason why I'm bringing this up is this Thursday is a training day this Thursday we're doing rebranding this Thursday we had to reschedule our morning training because the individual who would be training it or truly would now have to be helping assist Chris with doing the rebranding, moving around in the trucks, and the same personnel, since we only get a limited amount for training on the, day, on the morning session, might be needed to move the vehicles so that we can have continuous movement and get it done relatively efficiently. So I would just ask that please check our events uh, or check with the Chief's office to see if we do have something going on that particular day. I bring this up only because the last time they started it was on Thursday, which was the meeting day. And many times the meeting day itself, it would have kept on continuing going up, which it didn't. It, early, it ended early. wasn't a big problem, but trying to get people down here to do something when they know they're going to be here for a meeting, sometimes a little bit more difficult to get. We've been doing for years, Thursdays have always been either training or meetings in Wallenfield Fire Department. So just if we can just have that going back and forth. Um, so if any of you were at the table, we're going to be coming to morning training. Don't bother. We can come and drive trucks. All right. Our monthly reports uh, as done. And once again, I owe gratitude to both uh, Chief O'Kelly, Assistant Chief O'Kelly, and Megan for doing the numbers. We got Ballinville alarms, 55 total was 57, 13 for Lysander alarms. That is now changing with the uh, us now being called out at Northwest Fire District. Of course, as we brought up to our meeting members, saying there are going to be some issues, I proved that the night that we started being Northwest by not knowing who I was when I was talking to fire control at <laughs> nine minutes past midnight, looking for some some despondent individual to decide to take a swim in the Seneca Canal here. Uh, so we are doing better. We are falling out, but I got. I felt a little bit better that I called out tonight at Northwest Car 1 and then I had fire control come back with Ballonville Car 1 and now Northwest Car 1. So it goes both ways. But if you have anybody making any complaints about how some of our people may be confused when they're calling out, especially with the renumbering and the rebranding, it's to be expected. Uh, myself, 45 years of calling out as Ballonville, whatever, it's hard to make that change. So just give them a pat on the head and send them on the way. Um, if we were to break down, which they have broken down our calls quite a bit to make it a little bit more sensible as to what we're doing, just to give you a general idea for the general public, with the 57 calls that are out there, we're trying to break it down now, and I'm gonna be a little simple here. I'm not gonna give you the numbers of members that might be in attendance because it gets a little convoluted. But just to give you an idea, station one, for the amount of calls that we had, which was 56 or 57, 7.2 members per call. For station two, 2.15, two and a quarter per call. For station three, 5.5 per call. And for station four, 1.4 per call. So we do have the manpower. We are getting the vehicles on the road. I can even go down and tell you how many times each vehicle rolled to the call. So we are busy. It may not appear that way. There might be sometimes we've got a couple of weeks we're not doing anything, but then there's days where we can't even turn around and have lunch or dinner or whatever else without being disturbed. So we've had some interesting calls, the one with the young man who decided to go for the late swim. Um, and also uh, we spent yesterday morning or midday at Randy and Cody uh, assisting them with a the fire call as well. So 
fire department is still very busy. I'm going to ask if I can for training money for Matt Berkler, one of our members who would like to attend the uh, fire academy. I've already given the information to the treasurer along with a uh, purchase request for $96. Uh, this is going to enable us to have one of our own members. Uh, he's taking a course of fire extinguisher maintenance which would better improve to have that done in-house along with what is done by Jerome as well. So um, it would give us an in-house individual who could help us out. And that would be for May 1st and May 2nd at the Academy of Fire Science in New York State. So making a request of $96 for training. I don't know if you want to pause on that and do anything with it or Will it require, it's the first and second that we require an overnight stay? I'm sorry. Will it require? Thank you. I couldn't remember what Will it require an overnight stay? It is not, well, you know what? He didn't say that, but uh, the amount of money would include it if it was that he decided to stay overnight. It would, okay. Okay. So. I'll make a motion to approve the $96 expenditure for training. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Carried. One last thing. Um, with COVID, we've altered the way we respond for our EMS going to the scene so as not to put our people in harm's way, but at the same time, not to hold back giving the needed care that might be necessary for an individual. We had indicated that we would go on an echo call. Echo call is generally life or death. The person needs immediate help from anybody from anywhere. So we would go on those regardless of what the situation was. Um, but if it's not an echo call, we basically just advise the ambulance, we are in-house and staff. If they get on the scene and they need us, we will respond. I've gotten a couple of complaints from the ambulance service. The other night we got questioned <coughs> by fire control and an ambulance service, which will remain unnamed, uh, that they wanted us to go because they were still 15 minutes out. If you do the math with fire service, if you bang us out the first time, basically, and Rick can bear me out, five minutes to get to a station. Then by the time you saddle up, get out on the road, it may take you 10 minutes to be going to the scene. So an ambulance responding saying they're 15 minutes out, well, you know what, we're still 10 minutes out because we haven't even gotten out of the house yet. So many times, they won't even bother the ambulance having the fire department respond because many times they'll be already on the scene before we get there. So keeping that in mind, us advising them that we're staffed, that if they do get on the scene, we will come. It was mainly designed for the COVID response because we didn't know if we were walking into a madhouse. Well, the other night, it was a COVID house that they were requesting us to respond to, and we walked. Uh, in favor of the fact that we want to keep our people safe. We're not equipped, other than with an N95 and gloves, to go into a house that has COVID in it already. And car two responded, and squad two responded. As car two walked through the door, in comes the ambulance that had asked us to go because they were 15 minutes out. They managed to beat us even though we were in house and got there, and squad two was behind them. There was no need for us to do that. However, we're going to regroup at the Chiefs line and start thinking in terms, okay, we'll try to meet everybody halfway because yesterday morning I got woken up by uh, the ambulance director from GBAC who's about ready to retire and uh, indicating, Jesus, something changed. How come you guys we have three ambulances out of service? How come you're not responding? I said, the last year, we've been doing, we're staffed in-house and we will come if you need us. And we've been very good about it. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Conversation continued. I said, okay, well, we'll, re we'll rethink that and we'll get back to it. So I will get back to it. What we're thinking now is that we will go back to, at the very beginning of COVID, we did have one squad, minimum of two EMTs will respond. However, if they get there and they realize it's COVID, they do not enter. If it's a matter that they had the equipment and the ambulance would get there and the ambulance would share the equipment, then they can assist in that matter. 
So we will have that conversation and we will let you know what our decision is. But right now, any calls that we get that are not echo and we're not being requested by the ambulance to beat them to the scene, we're essentially going to staff in-house and wait for the ambulance to be on the scene and then they can call us to ask for help if they So if you get any complaints coming at you, that is our stance for now until we can have another conversation to see if we can do it another way that would be beneficial. But right now I believe this system has worked for an entire year with no issues and not getting anybody into any situations. So we're going to maintain it for now. But as the safety officer has told us many times, the numbers are going down. However, there is a little bit of a surge now. And we're concerned with that little bit of a surge because as that surge starts to come up with summertime, People gathering out outside without the mask, without the mask, <coughs> you can see the spike, especially now with the issue that they've had with the Johnson & Johnson, uh, where they're stopping any uh, vaccinations with that until they can fix the problem of the blood clots. Um, we don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves and put our people in jeopardy. So that's basically the, the stance we're taking for now. If anybody has a thought otherwise, please let us know and we will certainly entertain uh, just how much harm we will for people. But right now, that's our stance. And we got a problem. Oh no, we don't. Okay. Any questions for me? I just have a general question about your report. Am um, I misreading it? Because no. you've got Baldwinville with 55, Lysander with 13, and total with 57. That you asked Megan because she can explain it much better than some I. Some calls are just Lysander only, and some are Baldwinville and Lysander. Okay. That's been the way it's been written for a while now. There's like two calls that Baldwinville didn't go on. Okay. Because they were just Lysanders. Okay, but the total still should be. No, we only had 57 calls. She's saying that. By senior and Baldwin, we got called out for one, so that's one plus one. Oh, okay. One each. Oh. I got gotcha. you. Only by senior. So there was 11 calls table. that they both got toned out for. I got gotcha. you. Thank now, you. Correct me if I'm wrong, Chris. That's going to change now that we're being banged out as 0327. Yep. And, and so I just, we probably won't see that from this point on. Hopefully. There. They're switching over to the new server and the dispatch. It hasn't been coming through the last couple of days, so it'll be back up tomorrow. So, and then we'll backlog the ones that are going to be missing. Oh, and also, Rick, last month you said that there was uh, was an exit on to Prigo. Remember when I said there was only one off of Prigo? It is off, only one off Prigo. The other one's off Tappan, and the other one, they don't want anybody coming in because it's going to be gated for those apartments and houses up here. Uh -oh. At the end of Punch Drive. That's going to be gated. So there's one off Tappan and then there's one off Prigo. Okay. To enter so the there, But I wasn't misreading the blueprint. There is a. No, no, no. You didn't read it. But it's good. gated. But you question the fact of only having one opening on Prigo. Right. When there was actually only one on Prigo, but there's also one on Tappan. Right. Thank you. Nominations and resignations of members. Uh, so there is a resignation from Baldwinsville of Justin Holbrook. And in addition, there was a member, Jesse Castle, who did not get voted in by the company for a membership. Uh, so she has dropped from the rules of the Northwest Fire District as well. Um, we also have two status updates. We have two, sorry guys, we have two members, Amy Harper and Garrett Rosik, who have moved out of district. Um, they have advised the company of their new address. The company voted to retain their membership at last Thursday's meeting. So I'm going to make a motion that we also retain their membership uh, within the Northwest Fire District. I'll start with that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And that is it for updates to membership. And moving to old business. Uh, there was a question about where uh, if both washer and dryer were going to come out of uh, payment, we had planned for the washer uh, out of the station's refund. Um, after having the final 
Retentions paid for the last two contractors. Um, there is sufficient funds in the capital project to pay uh, for both the washer and the dryer out of those funds and have additional, uh, still a little bit left over for the other few things that we may need. So we're good with that. Uh, On the uh, washer and dryer, is it shipping next Tuesday? Thank you. Excellent. Uh, it'll probably be a week from the carrier. We should have it before the end of the month. Both of them. Good, because that doesn't have enough to do. Because then I can pump up on the priority list. And that's replacing the high fire, right? That would allow us to yeah, work as a use it as a district instead of using high fire. Okay. All right. So there's a motion on the table. Tony, you second. Yes, I do. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Any other old business? Yeah, I just wanted to give a couple quick updates on the relettering and rebranding. Um, the reason for some of the delays is we ran into, they ran into some issues. Um, on uh, squad one, the Greyhound um, was actually airbrushed on, not, not vinyl. So there's two ways to do it. Either you sand it down and repaint the door, which is a lot, a lot, a lot higher cost and probably not going to be able to match the color grade. Or they put a larger patch on there just to cover it up. So they're going to do the larger patch. The Baldwinsville patches on truck one, engine 21, engine 41, squad two and three were not laminated when they were made. Therefore, they don't peel off very well at all. They had to use an eraser wheel um, to get it off. The eraser wheels are like 50 bucks a piece. They went through four of them just to get off, get the decals off just the truck. And he burned out one of his drills. Um, so we had him put a larger patch over the top with the Baldzo patch. He's guaranteeing it, doesn't expect any issues. However, you do see the line a little worse than we thought it was going to be. Um, all of them are done except no, Squad 3 and Engine 21. Squad 3, since it's an older squad, I told him just to cover it with another patch. Um, engine 21, I asked him to go ahead and use the eraser wheel and make that one look nicer. It's going to be around a lot longer. I'd rather see it last longer. Um, they, they mentioned they just misquoted for timing. They, they were going to take a little longer. Um, he, uh, he gave me the earliest possible date um, as uh, Deputy Chief DiGregorio was pushing to try to get done as soon as possible. Um, with that, uh, there was a couple additional costs. Leave it outside, please. Which is going to add cost uh, of $340. Um, the additional materials did larger patches that had to be printed to cover. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the, the adhesive wheels and, and a couple things there. So. It puts the, it increases the total from four thousand four fifty five to four thousand seven ninety five.
that was just the update I wanted to give you. Okay. Uh, under. Um, you still in unfinished business? Yep. Uh, I had two notes. Did we ever find out what happened to the MDT in the squad? How it got damaged? Uh, that's the chief thing. I don't know. What? The MDT in the squad, do we know how it got damaged? News to me. Station three? Or no, squad. That that was here and you, your deputy and assistant are involved on that. We we need some answers on that, Chief. Um we need some answers on that. If you can talk to your deputy and find out the status of that MDT on station one. Just do some background on that and get back to us in the next couple of weeks. It's kind of important. Okay. That came through as an ERT, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It came through that uh, MDT was broken and it needs to be replaced. There was one on the old engine 7 that was an issue. It came through as squad 1 and it was damaged or broken after a call or during a call. I know, uh, Joanna, we all set with that uh, issue with the Thruway Authority and... I haven't heard back from them yet. I will call them Thursday. Have you gotten any more notices about no. it from the collections agency? No. Uh, yeah. One last thing, uh, and it's quick. Um, the, the phone system there, um, currently we have 30 phones. What we're going to do is reduce it to 15. Um, I have lists and I can send them to you guys if, if you want, but I gotta go ahead with it. Remember, this is the cost savings that I presented a couple meetings ago. Um, so, with me reportedly canceling some of the uh, Time Warner accounts that I don't use anymore, it would disconnect the phone system through the entire district. So, I uh, have advanced IT start on it. Um, it's a two year contract, free equipment. We don't have to pay for any of the actual phones or the the equipment that goes up in the IT room. Um, fully supported regardless of whether we keep them as a, uh, as a uh, um, contractor or support or not. So it's, uh, there's a monthly charge for it, but it, it's cheaper than what we're paying monthly for time warning. Yeah, and hopefully. That's why it got 
caught in there. Hopefully it'll be all rectified on, on, on Friday. As a matter of fact, if I saw an ERT correctly, there's a problem with Rusty 3, 6, or right? Rusty Pumper 3. What's that? Rusty Pumper 3. RP3. RP3. <laughs> Confusing, isn't it? Learn the trucks. We got you. Outfitted for the supply movement not to exceed $400. Do I have a second? I will. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Any other new business? All right. Station usage. Um, I learned through Facebook, surprise, surprise, uh, that there is going to be a chicken barbecue here. Sunday, April 25th, that we need to approve? I'm sorry? Apparently there's going to be a chicken barbecue here on <coughs> April 25th that we should approve that if they happen to want to have it done. Sure. Okay. I, I just saw it all over Facebook, well, so I'm assuming. I, I gotta make a comment on on, on any I, I as you know you guys paid for me to go to commissioner training. Um, and I did that and one of the huge, huge topics was, i.e., approval of fire department activities um, specifically tied to, you know, if you're a 501c3 organization versus being not. If, if you're 501c3 and you, know, you do what needs to be done, you know, normal, easy peasy process. If you're not a 501c3 organization, he said, don't approve it because it, it has to do with taxes. But with that being said, the bigger picture is relevant to this. We have to either approve every single thing that the fire companies do, whether it's breakfasts, dinners, exercise class, barbecues. And if we don't do that, there is a huge issue that hangs over our head. Mm -hmm. So... Just making that point, you know, you're here on behalf of Lysander, make sure. It's we, why I get so frustrated that we tell them over and over, you have to get approval first. I, I saw it as and well. And it just shows up on Facebook, hey, we're doing this without being asked or getting approval first. It, it, it has, it has to go through, it has to go through the process. It, no, no gray area here. And to outline that, want to do it, you send it to Megan, Megan brings it up to, to me, or, or puts it on the agenda to bring it up to the meeting. If it doesn't work in that time frame, still send it and we can talk about it as a group and just get it done. I, I, I will make a moment, or let, let's do the, the whatever we need to do, but we got, it's got to be done. It, it's got to be done. We can't just it has to be approved everything okay but that has to be explained because that's not the process we've done previously well I, I, I'm telling you they email me again they ask if they can have an event if it's open then it gets put down and we bring it up and we never tell them it's not it doesn't move forward until we approve it they assume if it's open and if it's on a schedule it's a formality that we just have to mention it in the meeting and I'm almost sure that's the verbiage we used before, is it just had to be on record. Now you're saying something different. I am absolutely saying something so different. So that means the process changes and it needs to be communicated to them. But because I, that's not the way we've done it before. I, man, I don't want to argue with you, but I don't, I think it was, I think I'm understanding it is, this is not nothing new. I understood it that, i.e. they want, anybody wants to have a car wash or a barbecue, they submit it to me, and we, they bring it up, and we just let the public know it's been addressed. That, that I'm not saying we vote on anything. If that's why I'm understanding what you're thinking, you just said everything has to be approved. First. No, 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 not yes, all in favor, not that. It's just what we're doing now. We're, you know, it goes to Megan, 
Megan puts it on the agenda, we read it off, that's good enough. There's no, you know, I make a motion to do that. So what we're doing is significant or sufficient, but we it has to be done that way. That's what I'm saying. Haven't we been doing it that way? Generally, yes. My point is that Megan, did they inform you? That's my point. Okay. So that they didn't inform us, they didn't ask, hey, we'd like to have a chicken barbecue. So it's not on the agenda. So it's not on the agenda. So I, if I hadn't seen it on Facebook. I, I, get, I got you, but that's not like that's the rule. That's the exception. They typically do inform us ahead of time that they want to do something. I'll give them 80% of the time. It just needs, more importantly, it needs to be done every time. That's yes. all. Okay. It's that's just, it. It just seems that's to be it. address it over and over. That's for both nice. companies. Yes. We do have a policy in the rules and regs for it. And, and it does state that they need to fill out a hall usage agreement form, which I don't. No, not for that. So that might be one we just want Brad to take a look through. And, and that's specifically for renting out the hall to somebody. That's not for within the. I don't want to overcomplicate this. Just okay. make sure. Make the presidents know, hey, reminder, send it to, you know, reminder, this is what we need and this is why and move on. It just needs to happen. Do we want to address the other situation that was asked by the company this morning in an email? I would say so. I would say so because we're going to have to get them an answer, so. So, um, Baldwin's Hill has asked if they can have some type of award ceremony in the firehouse uh, where they have members only. They're going to serve food and have it catered and then pass out awards from the past year that they haven't been able to do at their normal banquet that they usually have in January. Now, there was not any specific date on that. It was just a more of a, are we, can we do this? Right. Right. I'm, I'm sure whether he gets to go ahead then he'll right. work for it from there, but he just wants to know if, obviously, if we're going to allow it. Because if we're not, then it's the day we're going to go from there. So, so my take on this is we do a good job, for the most part, at following the guidelines with six-foot distancing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we do a good job with that. Uh, however, it, it, like in my email, you know, I'm very honest about this. I believe in decisions are based off of risk versus reward. We know in order for our fire departments to be proficient and good at what they do, they have to train. So we know we put these people together to train to, to do our job properly. That is a risk versus a reward. Now, with that being said, I also put in writing that, um, listen, when Baldwinsville Fire Company has a business meeting, that has the possibility of having 40, 50 members has a possibility. And I'm thinking in my head that this, this award ceremony could have all of that and then some, because they deserve it, honestly. <laughs> You know, now with that being said, I, we can space them out. We've got a big firehouse. We can space them out. So I don't have a problem overall with it, but it still sticks in my mind is when we agreed to allow Bowser to have their business meetings, the first business meeting, we had an exposure and lost first responders for, and I don't know exactly the number, but they were first due that affected our operation or the chief's operation. And um, I say risk versus benefit. They had a business meeting to get some sort of normalcy, some communications. So risk versus benefit. Was that the calculator? Now, with that being said, I know we can all go out to dinner. We can go out and do what every single day. I'm just concerned. Now, is this a no vote for me? Absolutely not. It's not a no vote because I know how important it is for us to move forward. I mean, if, we're, if they're following the guidelines, if they're following what they're supposed to do, and quite frankly, there was a question in the email that said, you know, uh, 
like finger foods versus dinner. It, to me, I don't think that that's a determining factor for me. I, I you know, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm a balls of fireman, so I have to make that decision myself whether or not I want to go. You know, I'm, I'm active, I go to calls, I go to training. It'd be nice to sit down with the people and have a meal, but it's one of those deals. So where I stand, I support doing it safely. I will absolutely, you know, look forward to some normalcy, but I think the new normal is these masks that I can't, you know, hear and see well with the damn things. But um, so I, I'm not a hard yes and I'm not a hard no. I would like to know what everybody else feels. I do think it's important. You know, Lysander's in a little different situation. They don't have the huge numbers and pack that many people on even on their truck floor. So you can't say it's one versus the other, but you can't say it's the same across the board. You know, Lysander has 10, 12, how many men, women, 15 in a, a business meeting on a Monday? Yeah, probably uh, eight to ten. Eight to ten. That could be spread out twenty feet. <laughs> you know, you go to this side of the, the, the district. And I mean I I haven't been to a business meeting in a long time, but anyways, that's where I stand. I, I wanna support it because I bleed in my heart, but man, it's up in the air for me. Is this something where people can comment on this? As the award chairman of uh, awarding people for their years of service, you're talking too many big numbers. My main concern, even though some people would rather have a big flourishing banquet and a big hall and hundreds of people applauding them for having done whatever they've done for those amount of years, that's fine. My concern presently is we have always given members their due in January, the beginning of the year, and there aren't that many. You may be talking, if they brought their spouse, and only their spouse, you could be talking 26 people here, include your president, and perhaps one other dignitary, and that's it. So you could have a small number of people, just so the people who are eligible for their awards for years of service, and for their life of membership, which we do have a member, that is getting their life membership, that they can have their their day in you know the sun, so to speak. So I don't think that they're looking to bring a whole world of people in here. Because we were told when we wanted to do a banquet, most places will only take 50 people. Well, Tony, you've been in as long as I have almost. Do we have only had 50 people? We generally have 150. <laughs> that's that's not, where it's been not looking to put 150 people in this station. If no, but they did not open it to every member. No, we don't want to open it to everyone. That's that that is what they got this morning, Chief. <coughs> they wanted to invite every member of the depart of the fire company. Not well, spouses, you won't find just this member. Right so that's kind of where we're <clears throat> that was not the conversation at the meeting. The conversation was to just get permission to give out the awards. The awards is box full. It's a, it's a small amount of numbers that are going to get. And that was my take on it, that that's all we were looking for. But if they're looking to bring the whole world in. Well, when they say, you know, Chief, if the way I read it this morning, the way I read it this morning <coughs> was members abroad, not dignitaries, not mutual aid, members abroad. So in my head, that's where I'm thinking, at an annual election, you get 50 people. You know, and, and again, I don't know. <laughs> That's where I was, because what you're saying is significantly different than our email. And that's what I would ask you to give to them. Yeah, we don't mind if you give out the awards to just the personnel and maybe their significant other are present so that they can have the award that was due to them back in January. Otherwise, if it's a matter that, well, our names won't be read at a banquet, well, yeah, we'll save them until next year if we can have a banquet. And your names, and you can stand up and you can get the same applause you would have had, except you won't have a trophy in your hand because you already got it on your wall. So I would suggest 
that if permission were given, that the number be taken down to have, if you want a representative from the commissioners, but just to have the people who are getting the award with their significant other. Because that's all they're going to bring to the banquet anyway, is their significant other. You know, granted, there'll be other people there, but here, it's just so they can get that award. To be quite honest, I'm taking up some space in the office, and it should probably be in their house, not mine. So, you know, I, I think they should get there, because there's also a, a bit of a, a gift award that goes with it, that is now sitting dormant. You know, these people have earned it. But that's just mine, as one individual. So. Yeah, but that's, I think you need to speak up and say that. I, I don't think it's our place to tell them who to invite. If we want to tell them a number, that's one thing. But to say you can only have just the people that are getting the award, I don't, I don't think that's our place to do it. That's, that's the organization's decision. I, I agree, just members, it's, you're not getting the mutual aid guys, you're not getting that, which add up to, you know, that 150 we typically have at a banquet. So. Members only, no spouse, no anybody other than just members. That's my take on it. You know, what if we said to actually, because we allow right now the, pub, the public's in our building right now, because we're having, it's an open meeting law, and we could have 60 people sitting here. We, there, there's no restriction that I know of the numbers, we're saying we gotta provide social distancing, right? We know that, that's the law. So what if we said, took the square footage of the building, take, take all of the personal opinions out, take the square footage based off the occupancy, and just do the math, and, and said this is the number of people you're allowed to have here. Because to say now members only, we're allowing the public here, we're having public meetings. Just a thought. I, I mean, again, I, I'm all over the place on this because my heart says one thing, my head says the other, and uh, I want to do what's right for the membership because agreed with Chief D, people that are receiving the awards, 99% of them deserve that and more. So there's got to be something that we can do that we can keep our personal safe. And it's, it's a requirement to keep our personnel safe. That's the other side of it. It's not a want or a nice thing, it's a requirement. So there's gotta be a, a mathematical equation, right? And then we take the guesswork out of it. The mathematical way is gonna be that they're going to have planning a family picnic somewhere else. And I guess, you know what? That would probably also be when they give out the award. My thing was, we should honor our people as ourselves, but they should do that first before they do a family picnic. But you now say, no, you can't have it here. When the family picnic comes, that's probably where they're gonna give out the award, so. Nobody's missing out on anything, man. We have tried to do banquets. We can't get a place that will give us to let everybody that we normally have come. We understand it. A lot of those 150 people are our own who come out of the woodwork once a year or whatever else to go to the bank. Yeah. And they're generally, they're our members and their spouse, significant other, or the best friend that they just picked up on the corner the night before. <laughs> so basically, they bring someone and they enjoy one another's company. So you may have, are you going to have that many in a family picnic? No, nah, probably not because they have to pay for it as well, where we pay for it at a banquet. But we can't get a, any banquet hall to give us to where we can bring 150 people. I agree. So that's why the thought was, well, let's try this, let's try that. But if right now they're going to be told, no, you can't do it in the station, uh, even though we can have the doors open, you can be outside, you can be inside, it's a nice day, then fine. They'll probably find another way, and it'll probably be when they decide to do a family picnic. I want to be very clear. I am not 
I am not opposed to allowing it at all. Just got to figure out the number. There's a couple things you might want to look at. There are software programs out there, I believe now, that'll help calculate that. Not the type that measure egress and access. That's what you don't want. So there may be something out there already. But the other thing to think about, too, is if you're going to have people moving about, socializing, that's where you're going to get into the problems. People will remain at tables and stay there, you know, for the duration and make sure they put their mask on when they walk away. You know, don't get into the six-foot zone without a mask on, get into those situations. That's all going to have to be, you know, evaluated as well. There's got to be a couple, I mean, at least a couple restaurants in our district that are struggling with this and come up with some way to do it up to a certain point. So there may be a place to go to look for guidance. Well, but you always got to look into CDC and the DOL as far as, uh, or DOH as far as the specifics. I know not everybody likes it, but what if they got a COVID test and have presented a negative COVID test before coming so that we know yes, you're negative. You're safe to be around. That was actually brought up in the email. It was kind of six to one half a dozen. The COVID, the COVID, COVID test could come back negative, and then you got to if they go to the next portion of the test, it would become positive. So you'd have to have something set up so that the test is being done just before the, the facility, you know. The, the, activity you know just look I have this email and I want it's a short paragraph I'm gonna read this man read that word for word um, this is uh, this is that I I wanted to revisit the idea to have an award dinner for the members at station one again the plan would be to have it catered and hand out the awards we would follow and make sure COVID requirement are being followed. I am bringing this back up since the membership was inquiring about it at our past departmental meeting. Um, now, with that being said, like when I read it and I thought about it, it you know, bouncing around, I'm like, okay, how do we make this happen but make it safely? But one of the points, I, I was the person that brought up and said, does it make sense to say, okay, like they're doing at some of these events, larger scale events, in order to go to this game, you've got to have either the shot or, or, or a negative test or do this, do that. But then, you know, somebody, you know, the commissioner brought up a valid point. <laughs> we don't do that going to firehouse. We don't do that going to visit me. And it makes sense. So where is that balance? I'll, I'll be damned if I know. Um, but if you're talking about people having to have a shot or a COVID test, last night, last week in the business meeting, three quarters of the membership had already had their COVID test. Agreed. So agreed, agreed, agreed. Now I'm not saying that's the right answer. Well, I'm just saying if 85% of them are already had the vaccine, you know, and that's a requirement to do stuff nowadays. Like I said, I, I'll support this. Just figured out the right number. I, I want the, our people, the, the people that take care of this community, deserve to be recognized. And the least that they can do is get a meal and an award. I believe that. I just want it done safely. And I don't know what that number is. So, am I taking it the board is in approval of allowing them to have their? Say that again. I take it that the board is in approval for allowing them to have it. I mean, that's what I'm hearing. Isn't I am. It? I, I, I am, but I, it just can't be carte blanche, and I don't know where. I don't. We can. We can say it's approved based off of what. We're not at the point of what. I'll approve it, and I'll so say yes. Do we want to research it and talk to Sean more, and then talk about it at the workshop? Yes, that's a good idea. Okay. I think a, an email draft that says we'll support it, but man, we got a lot of talking to do and figure it out. That's my opinion. Okay. Um, any comments from the public? I just have a quick question. Where's Station 4? 
Station number four. I, I, uh, it's the old Lysander Station one. Okay. Sorry, with all these new numbers and things, it's hard for me okay. to keep. We're still learning it too. Um, any day for an executive session again? Good. No, okay. <laughs> Actually, that wasn't painful. <laughs> Next meeting uh, workshop is Tuesday, April 27, and uh, next monthly meeting is May 11. Uh, both will be held here. And I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.23. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adjourned.